one seller has two lots. Um, one of them we basically already have pre-sold. Uh, the second one has owls on it, uh, which might make it a little more difficult. The agent we're working with, uh, like an off, we're doing an off-market kind of thing with the agent who's bringing us buyers and we're giving her a cut. Um, she said she thinks she can get, get it under contract in, in a week or two, but she's not positive. So the seller will only sell both lots together. Um, and we don't want to lose it because we already have 50K in profit on one of them. Um, so we're trying to figure out how to not let this deal blow up. And you said that there is owls, like the bird owl, O-W-L? Yeah, so in, in Southwest Florida, that's a common, there's two common um, species that can kind of burrow and make a home on uh, some of these lots, uh, owls, and then gopher tortoises. Uh, and they're highly, highly protected. So what you have to do is it basically costs between, Frank, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding or DeAndre can correct me, it's five to $10,000 to rehome these tortoises and or owls. And it takes anywhere from two to four, two to five months to have the process go from start to finish. Never dealt with it myself, but uh, yeah. Definitely not something uh, you want to screw with if they're a protected species. I've dealt with it before uh, on other lots, and some buyers don't mind because you know they're gonna if they're gonna build, it's gonna take them six months to get plans approved, get a you know get the get the architect lined up, whatever that is. You know, there's a certain amount of time in place that it takes to get those things done anyway, so it's not that huge of a deal. Um, we just don't want to leave the seller hanging out to dry or ourselves. Um, you know, we have one already sold, but he wants to sell these both together. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use transactional funding and, and do a simultaneous close on the one that's pre-sold. And we will also have to do that for the second lot that we're trying to get sold. The agent we're working with off market is telling us that she's very confident she can get this under contract in a week or two, uh, but obviously can't make any guarantees. So uh, we're just trying to kind of protect our, protect our downside and, uh, you know, make sure nobody gets hung out to dry. Hey, yo, Matt, you guys don't want to flat fee the second one just in case she can't come through, maybe? Yeah, we could. We could do that. Um, we're, re we're really going to be under the gun, though, because this guy wants to close both lots uh, on the same day. Like, to, he, he wants uh, – they're both on the same contract. So, in his mind, he's getting 400K on closing day. Right. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Can you get, uh, I mean, is, is there enough uh, there in the deal where you can get hard money loan to- Yeah, possibly. So- Or the uh, entire thing, if needs be. I mean, would, it, would you be able to sell it for more if you closed on it with hard money? Yeah, we could. With the owl issue, maybe potentially got some permit stuff out of the way to be able to entitle the property a little bit better and then sell it for a lot more, maybe. We could potentially. 250 is kind of- um, Re, a, full, a full retail price, which the the, uh, the agent brought a buyer in who's willing to pay full retail. These are really nice uh, canal lots to go right into the river. Um, so uh, they're 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 pretty high end. Um, but no, that's a good call, Frank. We could try to arrange some maybe some private money or hard money to kind of get us through the second the second lot. There's not a ton of profit there. There's probably about thirty k, and we'll have to give probably ten of that to the agent. Uh, eh, maybe like six or seven. Um, and then, you know, honestly, I, I'm, I would be happy to come close to breaking even on the second one, just to make sure we could secure the first one. So just that, that's what I have going on right now. It almost sounds like it might be worth, uh, coming up with the right private money real, I mean, start hunting private money really fast yeah. and build the second lot yourself, because then you'll make a hell of a lot more money. And that's the nice thing. Most of the Florida market, even if the real estate market crashed, Florida as a whole was for the most part, two years behind the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. So if you build it fast and the fact that it's waterfront on a canal down in South Florida, I, I think you'd turn out pretty, uh, pretty well that way also. Yeah. Well, I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Is there anything inexpensive you can do to the lot that will draw buyers, like adding uh, fencing or adding a cheap canoe or adding a boathouse or something small to throw it on there that'll cost you very little that'll attract a person to the lot? Those are great ideas. And those are ones that we can look into. Um, I'm not, uh, just off the top of my head, I'm not sure if, um, that, that there could be something there. Absolutely. And, and Sharonda, I haven't even, I haven't even thought of that. So that's, that's a great, um, 
that's a great heads up on that. And uh, I, I'm basically need to have another probably like a couple of chats with our agent because um, she thinks maybe the buyer on this one will buy this one for the other one for a, a much you know, greater reduced price and he can handle the owls and all that stuff. But uh, we're just trying not to let this deal blow up. You know, this could, this is probably X when it's all said and done 70, 80 K in profit to split uh, between my JV partner and I. So uh, yeah, Matt, just, Matt, how many, um, are you only working with that one agent who said they may have a buyer? Well, um, she's, she brought one of them and I'm not only working with her, but I do a lot of off market stuff with her and I have a couple other people I do off market deals with too, uh, that I can also reach out to. Um, but I, I'm trying to be a little more protective of my relationship with her because, yeah. um, you know, she's, she's been fantastic. And, uh, you know, I don't, don't want her to think I'm going around her back. I, I understand we got to do what we got to do. But anything I do, I just try to be as transparent as possible and just kind of let everyone know kind of, hey, this, this is what's going on. Because we got a lot we got a lot of moving parts on this one. Well, she well, she doesn't. Well, because she could come through because she's if you if you got a good relationship with her, that obviously means uh, y'all have a you've been doing some y'all got some good rapport. But yeah. in case maybe the buyers, she because it's not up to her, it's up to the buyers that she has in her network. So maybe if you find some other agents that um, are selling in that same price point. Because Lehigh Acres, you know, we got lots, or it depends on the part of Southwest. It could be Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres. Depending on what the price point is, that seems pretty high. So it could be on the higher end of, uh, I don't know, Cape Coral, Fort Myers, something like that. I will find the agents that are selling at that price point and maybe keep them as like a rebound. Like, hey, got this property. Let me know what you can get. And then say, hey, I got a buyer for it. Okay, great. I probably won't go with them right now, but I'll probably keep them on the back burner until that agent actually presents a buyer. Right. Um, well, yeah, yeah, that's a that's a really high price point. So you should be able to get in contact with a couple of agents, uh, depending on the city where that is. And this is Southwest Florida, so it's just it's a lot of inventory there. So it's like ah. there is, but there's not where this this little where these two lots are. They're on a prime street on a prime canal, and these things are money. And the agent, <clears throat> my agent who I speak with about that, kind of let me know that too. She's like, you know, there's a lot of inventory in different places, but this is a prime one. Mm -hmm. And one of the guys that buys a lot of my deals that she brought me as a buyer uh, is going to be the one who's buying this. He's buying it. He has a big development company. He's buying this personally to build her, to build his own. Uh -huh. So he will, he doesn't want to take the second one. Okay. Got no, it. he might. He might, and they might run it through their development company, but they're just not sure about that yet. He's buying the first property as his personal residence. Oh, got you. Oh, that's not, that's dope, man. That's dope. If that tells another you what kind of lot it is. Another thought being on a canal like that is a uh, boat dock and um, a lift. Mm -hmm. That's also a popular thing you see on, uh, you know, homes on uh, the canals. Well, I would say uh, the one thing that has us kind of under the gun right now is that the seller wants to close in, you know, 30, uh, under, under 30 days. He really wants to close in like 21 to 28 days, which is fine on the first lot, but we just really got to scramble. And um, we're, you know, about to put him under, we put him up, try to put him under contract today for the one lot. And he goes, no, I want to do both or nothing. So we're trying <laughs> to get that ironed out tonight or tomorrow morning. And um, we're just we just want to make sure once we get them under contract here, we have a verbal with them. And once we get the DocuSign signed that, you know, we're able to do what we say we can do, which, you know, I usually come through on those. Um, I don't tend to put stuff under contract just to do it. You know, it's, it's all very calculated. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of where we're at with that. Yeah, though, that, I've been in that position, man. It sucks, man. It's like you got one sold, but then you don't have the other one. Um, I mean, luckily the position I was in, the seller allowed us to split the lots, but like split the, split the contracts up, but I couldn't like the seller didn't believe me. So I, I had, I have a good relationship with the title company. And when the title company reached out to the seller, the seller explained, I, I mean, I don't know what the title company said. I don't know what she said. She must be sweet with her words, but <laughs> next thing you know, an addendum is signed, splitting the lot. So I sold one, sat on one for a little bit longer, but ended up selling that too. But I, they, the seller didn't believe me. So I begged the title company to do it. They did it and they got it. So I don't know, maybe he's stubborn with you, but if you got a good relationship with the title company, they may talk to him, but I don't well, know. My JV, my JV partner has a very good relationship with the seller. He's he's the one who brought the lead in and has been working with this guy for the last yeah. week or two talking. And they have a couple of common uh, real estate friends they know. So they, they, they have kind of built a, a bit of rapport quickly, but the gentleman's older, he's close to 80. 
And he's just kind of like, look, these are my last two lots I have. I want to get rid of them at the same time. Don't want to do two separate sets of paperwork, yada, yada. I want to do it in one shot and be done with it. So um, I, I think we can get this done. I, we're going to we're gonna get this thing under contract here and either tonight or tomorrow morning, get this thing wrapped up and then just put the pedal in the metal. Even if we have to like greatly reduce the second lot just to kind of get that thing done. And, and if nothing else, keep the profits on the first one. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. But enough about me. What's everyone else doing? Oh, that was already very interesting. I, the whole concept of dealing with owls, I hadn't thought of. I thought of bats. I've heard of bats, but I hadn't thought of owls. So that's bats, cool. bats on land? Oh, wow. Is that, is that in Georgia? So, yeah. So you use bats to um, capture mosquitoes. So some people like harvest bats in a sense. So oh, wow. different. Georgia, Alabama. Uh, Sean or Daniel, can I have a co-host for a moment so I can share my screen? Because I got something that I believe will help Matt Rogers and everybody else in the hive. There you go, brother. Okay, uh, let me see. I apologize if this is giant sized. Um, let me try and get this down to just uh, the center. I've got a huge monitor. Um, can everybody see this browser here? It's tiny coming it? through. Yeah, so we have see. your full screen and it's yeah, like, me, yeah. Let me uh, increase uh, the size here. Uh, there we go. Better? That is better. Okay. I can see it. Okay, so Florida has the advantage, advantage of being a, an extreme public record state. Uh, not all states can you do this in. But uh, so what I did is I went to sunbiz.org, which uh, Matt, you might want to do this. Search by name and let's just go, you know, what do you need? You need a private lender. So now to call randomly someone out of the blue and say, hey, you want to lend me money? Illegal. SEC will make your life hell. However, uh, thanks to Uncle Dave, uh, anybody who doesn't know Dave Day, uh, you want to watch Al Nicoletti's first podcast of the 2022 year. Uh, he interviewed Dave Day for almost two hours, and Dave just, it, he showed this one years ago, uh, and he re-showed it again in this podcast last night. So what do we see here? Private Lending Inc., Private Lending Financial, Private Lending Group, LLC. Now, yes, some of these are inactive, but also you have some that are active. So let's take a look at the records of just one of them. We've got the address, registered agent, title manager. So here's the manager, Sergio Pino on Ponce de Leon and Coral Gables. Um, he's advertised publicly as a business. You can contact this guy and offer your deal and say you need lending for it. Um, the ones that are inactive, and there's a lot of them in here that are active that you can reach out to. The ones that are inactive, uh, closed for whatever reason and stuff, Odds are you can still a lot of times reach out to these people. Andre Roke here, you know, this, this is one that was, that's inactive. Um, odds are the guy's still alive. Odds are the guy's got money. And once again, Coral Gables, Florida. Um, that's the advantage to these. They've advertised publicly that they are private lenders. You know, this is fair game money for everybody. Um, and, less, you know, and this is just, you know, one page. Uh, so then we get into limos. So private lending, stick with all the ones private lending, but we also have uh, private loans. Whole bunch come up under that name, you know, private loans. Then you get into private love. I don't even want to know what the hell's going on with that one. Uh, you know, looking for hard money. Lots of hard money lenders here. Active, inactive, does not matter. They've advertised themselves, so you can you know find them. You, know, you might have to you know get the name um, uh, of it. You know Annabelle Otero, 
I'm probably mispronouncing and butchering her name or his name, whatever. Uh, you know, you have to skip trace him real fast, but you know, there you go. There's you know several uh, you know hard money lenders, private money lenders. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other ways, but this was just one that uh, you know Dave threw out there again last night uh, to everybody in a podcast. I'd not shared it publicly before because the last time he did it was in a private group of 20 people. So he didn't want it shared to the world yet at that point. But when he shared it on a podcast, live, you know, broadcast live last night on YouTube live, Facebook live, you know, kind of makes it fair game at that point in time. So, um, hey, Frank, is there anything like this? <clears throat> Sorry, is there anything like hmm? this in other states that you're aware of? Um, most states have a Secretary of State. Yeah, Secretary so, of State. Yeah, it's just a matter of whether or not the state is a public info state or not. Like Texas, I don't know how much of that information is, is available uh, for corporations in Texas or other, or others. You know, not every state uh, is as open with their information. But you, yeah. you know, it can't hurt the try. You know, you go look up the uh, you know whatever the corporate registry is in each state. You know, go look and uh, you know search. You know, just you know the keywords for what you're looking for. You, know, you might find, you know, developers, it's a way to find developers, you know, custom builders, you know, odds are there are builders that add, you know, created a company with that name, you know, what it is they do, you know, sometimes yeah. it's, it is that simple search for specifically what you're looking for and, you know, see what's out there. Texas is good. You can see this too. Okay. Well, when our just verified, you can see that the podcast name one moment, it's, um, uh it's al nicoletti he's he's a member of the hive he's been at the the hive events um uh, let me see i will find the answer to that and i will uh uh give it back to uh whomever's in control here i just wanted to share that out and help people thank you frank that's uh that's great info hey frank you had said earlier um it was, I can't remember, it was Al Nicoletti's podcast you had listened to that the gentleman was on? Yep. I will find it uh, real fast and uh, I will link uh, his Facebook page uh, to the group for his podcast. Uh, hey, Frank, I can let everybody know how to do that in Texas. So you're right. In Texas, it's through the Secretary of State website and what you have to do is you go into the Secretary of State and you want to do a search on corporations, LLCs, et cetera. It's all under one search. But what you have to do is you have to set up a credit card with them, with the state. So you'll input your credit card. And then um, from there, you can now get access to a search, like a search index. So now you can go about and search out whoever you want and do a little research on, you know, on that from, from that standpoint. I just pulled it up, John. I see what you're saying. And you have to have a, a user ID and password to log in to get through. It, with Georgia, is very different. Like you can get in and see what you need without having to log in. So. Um, I see what John is talking about here. Okay, and in the group chat I just posted, there's a link to his YouTube channel, and then there's also a link specifically to his Facebook page for his podcast. Um, so Al, Al just you know comes up with some of the craziest content. So, and it was his uh, the podcast, uh, his first podcast of 20, uh, 2022 uh, that he was uh, broadcasting last night. And, it turned into a uh, two, two and a half, almost uh, three hour podcast. Uh, but uh, the gold, uh, when Dave Day starts talking, like he sneezes gold nuggets. I mean, just you know, run near the guy when he starts talking and there's going to be a fortune in gold laying around his feet. Hey, uh, Florida, Florida guys, can I ask you a question? I'm not trying to change subjects. Ask away. That's what we're here for. Fly away, Chris. Fly away. Um, 
what I guess, yeah, Matt, DeAndre, Frank, um, what is your perspective on lar- larger rural um, acreage plays in, in Florida? I mean, I know there's obviously not a lot of land and obviously a lot of it's underwater and wetlands and flood zones. And, um, <clears throat> I was just kind of curious if you guys have received much of that or if, if you have, you know, or, or most, most of your, your sellers want full market value. I mean, because when I was talking to developers, you know, infill lots were so plentiful in a lot of these these subdivisions that were overdeveloped. It's almost cheaper to just buy infill lots than to than to develop, um, at least in a lot of counties. So, is that has that been your experience in in most growing um, markets? Right now, they'll uh, developers. You just got to find the right developer, but they want those large tracts. Um, it's you know you, you just need to find the developers that are looking to build subdivisions and stuff like that and even stuff with wetlands i mean you know you build a subdivision you've got to give up x amount to wetlands and to you know water retention and stuff like that so you know that stuff doesn't scare them you know south southwest and southeast florida is half swamp land uh, anyways it was all yeah. ocean until they uh, poured some sand there and then some concrete, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Basically, exactly what Frank said. It depends on the developer or the builder because I have some builders, right? Um, they said don't send me anything under 10 acres, so it has to be 10 acres or more for them to even open my email, you know. So they want bigger tracks, they don't even look, they don't even waste their time with info lots. And then I have guys that are like, Hey man, that's too big, send me everything under five acres, you know what I'm saying? Um so it really just depends on the buyer you find and the relationship you develop with them. And then I know another guy in, uh, I think, Sarasota County. He's like, hey, man, don't send me anything under 100 acres. I want 100 acres or more. I'm like, geez, you know, anything, you know, recreational land, agriculture, whatever they can get their hands on. Just They just want it to be 100 acres or more. So they're definitely buying them. And like like what Frank said about the flood zones, the wetlands, uh, with bigger tracks, it's generally kind of comes with the game a little bit. Um, and like you said, they're not scared of that. With the smaller lots, yes. But with the bigger ones, they can find a way to mitigate those wetlands and do some extra stuff that I, don't, I can't explain. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's fair game either or. I think it's just based on the relationship that you build with them. Uh, I think it's more about the relationship and the questions you ask and stuff like that. So. Hey, I had a contribution real quick. This pertains to Texas, but I just wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, numbers that are involved in residential development. So I was at my engineer's office yesterday going over some floodland stuff, trying to get some stuff like out of the flood zone. And then we're also looking at a commercial development lot. So I'm looking at this lot that's like over 300 acres for commercial south side of San Antonio. Um, and we were talking about that property, but there was a hundred acre tract connected to this one that was part of this cell, part of the original cell and they sold it so the developer that bought it bought i think he bought the 100 acre lot for like a million or two and then they put like 22 million worth of infrastructure and then they're selling off those individual lots to lender homes and uh he showed us the total profit or the total net on that deal or total total gross on the deal was like 160 million or 170 million so off of this 100 acre tract their net profit was going to be like 90 to 100 million off of this one deal so Ooh. if you guys, are, if you're thinking about these tracks that are like hundred acres, if you get a developer in there or a builder, I mean, it's not pennies. So if you're afraid to lock those up because it's a, a million or $2 million price tag, the end buyer is going to turn that thing into Let 90 to hundred million cash. Let that's, that's pretty incredible, Anthony. Um, yeah. Uh, DeAndre on the, on the Florida lots, man, are most of the developers that you're talking to, are they wanting, already entitled like ready to build to build deals or most of them willing to, and, and typically taking the land through the entitlement process themselves they will they will take it as the, at this point and i'm gonna be honest with you at this point in the market where we are they'll take anything they'll go through the entitlements they'll talk to the city they'll do all that crap you just got to get it to them at a good price but they'll do everything. I do have one guy that said send him like 50 acres or more that was shovel ready or something like that. So he he does have a preference. But if it wasn't shovel ready, he'll still take it on. Uh, it's more about the size of the land. Like they just want a certain amount of acres. Like I want 50 or more. Um, but they're willing to, where we are right now, because I'm going to be honest with you, like 
a lot of them that I talk to, they they hit me up almost every other week. Um, like, hey, you got something for me this month? You got something for me next month? Next this week? Um, because it's it's hard it's hard for those guys to find because they're working on these deals. They're busy. They don't have the time to look to look for these parcels like we do, right? These tracks. So, and that's where we come in as an advantage. Um, but yeah, man, it's it's a demand for it, like super demand for it. And I guess, would you typically, in terms of staying in the deal, would you put an auction on that contract? Now, are, are, I guess, are they also, are they, these guys typically giving you a price per acre that they're arranged there? That, I, mean, I guess when you're going to negotiate with a, with a seller. A I, mean, I haven't done a deal with them, but they're a little bit different, right? So one of, our, one, of, one of them told me straight up, they was like, hey, man, look, you find us a deal, a development deal, right? Look, we'll, and if it's a good deal, um, we'll pay you up front and we'll take the contract. So they told me they'll pay me my fee and they'll just take on the contract. So I don't even have to get it on the contract. And I was like, oh, wow. So it's a, it's, it's a different, it's, it's really different from the traditional lock it up and the flip. It's a little different. Well, yeah, because the timeline is so much longer. I mean, we were starting to exactly. yeah, developers. Yeah, I guess because of the timeline. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at six, 12 months or a lot. I mean, guess, I, I guess it's, it's taken so long to get surveys done down there and stuff and so yeah, I guess that's been my my, my main thing because we were trying to we were starting to, to work with developers in Huntsville up in Alabama, but you know you're looking at a six to twelve month timeline to, to get stuff entitled, especially I'm sure in Florida where you know municipalities are just swamped. So I guess that's been my main question is how do you stay in the deal and at least get paid? Um, you know, as a as someone who's who's just sourcing land, um, it seems like the tricky part. Yeah, you know, I think I'm telling you, man. I think if the deal is good enough. They'll pay you before. They'll pay you, and then just, they'll just get the contract. Like give us the contract, we'll pay. We'll pay you in advance. I'm telling you. Uh, took, uh, a couple of them told me that, so that's how I knew it was kind of normal. I guess when you hear from more than one person, you know it's kind of normal. Yeah, yeah. Options work cool. also, and just sell them the option at that point in time for a fee. Yeah, or that. that's what I. Yeah, or that. What Frank just said. Yeah, it comes down yeah. to you know if if you can build up a rapport with them. Like, uh, you know, like DeAndre has done with a lot of uh, the developers that he works with, you know, he can trust, that, you know, you get to trust their word, um, yeah. you know, until that point, you know, to build that relationship. Plus it helps to, you know, the seller to feel like you're serious. So you, you might throw in a small fee that you, know, you might eat if you don't do anything with it, but, you know, you pay that option fee and it's sure. for the right to be able to market and resell that property. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> well, fantastic. Let me see. It's seven forty here. Let me. I got to count my. You know, keep my eye on the clock because I don't. I don't. I don't want to feel the wrath of Miss Love. Now I'm just messing with her. You know, the, the, it's ladies' night. So real quick, I think let's pivot. I asked. Uh, uh, and and so honored and, and humble, and I'm not being funny to have you know Mr. Bevers on the line, man. You know, a uh, 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 killing the industry, uh, real estate, doing the deal on the field. You know what I mean? A doer and not just a talker, man. And so wanted to ask him if he could kind of tell us a little bit about his thoughts on the event. What events? What, why is it important to go to events? Because I'm sure a lot of us been to events, a lot of new people on here, never really been to an event. Why should I go to an event? And man, if you could just bless us with a nugget or two, because you've been you've been hot lately, boy. Your, 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 your social media is on fire, buddy. I came here. I came here just to to take, man. I, I did not come here to to, to talk. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. But no, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it a point to, to come on these calls more. Um, thank you. Thank you. You're, you're very, very kind, man. I, I really appreciate it. Um, in terms of, uh, of events, so first of all, what, what's up, everybody? It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I don't know why I feel, I feel nervous. I guess it's because my first time, but um, I, I'm, just, I'm honored to be here, man. And, and um, you know, the fact that, that – I'm I'm here listening to all the gems being dropped, like Frank and and all these guys dropping gems in here. I'm like, man, I, I why why am I just now starting to hop on these calls, man? I I can't wait to be more more involved on these calls. But um, in terms of events, I believe in in proximity. 
I think proximity is is so important. Um, I think uh, you know uh, the last the last clubhouse call I was on, uh, Coach. We we had talked about this, and and it's uh, you know I don't know those of you that are on the call who's read the book um, Think and Grow Rich or the Laws of Success by Napoleon Hill. But uh, yeah, I, I always, I always, I love it. I love it. Coach pulls his book out. I, I, I always, I always. Where's mine at? Oh shoot, man! I always say I keep that thing on me. Shoot, man! You that caught that thing you, on you. Ah. You, you, you caught, you caught me, you caught me lacking, man. You caught me lacking. I know I have it here somewhere. Uh, I know I have it here somewhere because I was just, I was just sharing it with, with one of my uh, mentees. But anyway, um. There's a principle called the the uh, the mastermind, and and basically what what the mastermind is is you know now in 2022 we tend to to talk about the mastermind as if it's it's a um, it's like an it's an event, right? Like a, or or a verb like we're we're just masterminding, but when he talked about the mastermind, he says that when two minds come together in a spirit of harmony, that it creates a third mind that doesn't exist apart from those minds coming together. And, and you know, you have that in full effect whenever you go to an event um, in person, when you're in the same proximity, and when you're around individuals that are really doing the business and have, you know, you ever hear a speaker on stage and he's talking and his his excitement and enthusiasm about the business, um, it, it rubs off on you and you start to feel as enthusiastic as he is. Uh, um, that's, you know, uh, an effect of the, the mastermind taking place. That person's mind is actually affecting your mind and it changes you. You are now a different person because of that. It is a very, very real thing. And he breaks down the science of it. He even goes down to electrons and energy and, and how it works. And so I feel like proximity is such an important thing because, you know, if you're not doing, um, you know, deals or, or you're not where you want to be in business and you go to an event, um, and, and you're around individuals that are, what happens is their enthusiasm and excitement, you know, it rubs off on you and then you leave ready to run through a brick wall. And that might be, you know, the energy that you need in order to make something happen, you know, or sometimes it just takes one little idea and it might not even be something too significant. It might just be one little idea. And that idea is a seed that germinates into, you know, uh, uh, an innovation in your business that takes you to your goal that year. And so I, I could speak on this uh, forever. I, I don't want to. I don't want to come in and dominate. Like I said, I'm I'm here just to support. But you know, I'm a huge advocate for um, for going to as many events as humanly uh, uh, possible, especially like the one. Um, and I, I don't get paid to say this. I don't benefit in any way to say this. I, I'm just going to be there. But the uh, the hustle harder event is one of those uh, events that I think that everybody should make it a point to be there um, because a the, the tickets are so inexpensive. Uh, I think it's like 97 bucks and he has a 20% uh, discount. I'm not trying to sell tickets or anything like that. I don't benefit from it regardless, but it's like, it's like 97 bucks. Um, and, and I mean, Carlos Reyes is going to be there. Tang Nguyen, uh, Nicole Espinosa, Quentin Flores, um, myself, um, Josh High, Tiff High, um, and just, uh, you know, the, uh, Anthony, a lot of the hive mind, uh, uh, squad is going to be there representing very, very heavy. Um, and it's going to be in Milwaukee, February 4th and 5th. Um, and the cool thing about this event, what I love, what Tony Romero, uh, about what Tony Romero is doing is he's, he's a, a rookie in the game. I love it when rookies put on events, you, you know why when rookies put on events, they're trying to prove something. And I know because I've been a rookie, uh, I still consider myself a rookie in the in this industry and in this game. And, you know, when 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 rookies, you know, put on put on uh, events, we have to prove something to everybody. And so they go above and beyond it. And uh, I, I commend even though he's not here, I got to give him his roses. I commend Tony Romero. I'm helping him coordinate everything. And he is really trying to go above and beyond to serve. Um, he's definitely losing money on this event. <laughs> he's losing so much money on this event, but he doesn't, by the way, he does. I'm saying that jokingly, he doesn't consider it a loss. He consider, considers it an investment because, you know, he wants to 
serve and he wants to build a brand. Um, but the fact, oh, by the way, he has a uh, uh, Mike Giannis and 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 uh, and Charles Hernandez um, speaking at the event as well. Um, but he has gone out of his way to put together a lineup that is actually going to serve. And, and he and he he's given strict instructions to people that this is a non no pitch event. That you're um, this is not for for individuals to be pitching. It's to 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 be giving away value. And the cool thing about it is. Um, since he's a rookie, this is, was, was my main point on that. Um, he knows what it's like to be a, a, a newbie or somebody who's kind of like, you know, coming into the industry and coming into an event with a whole bunch of people and feel awkward. So he's created a situation where um, the networking and, and the VIP dinner where um, you have to be in close proximity with people. That's freaking cool. So like you have to be close to the speakers and it's going to give you the opportunity to be able to mastermind with these people so to be able to shake hands with with carlos reyes and quinton flores and nicole espinosa and to be able to ask them about their businesses and stuff like that um he's like getting forcing you out of your comfort zone so i love the fact that that's his vision and um uh, and so uh, anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna i mean that's that those are my thoughts coach i'll, I'll stay here and talk forever man so so yeah, those are my thoughts on events. Thank you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you heard it first. You, uh, you heard it best uh, from somebody who has been to, how many events you think you've been to, Mr. Bevins, in your time? Jesus uh, Christ. Um, in the last four years, in the last four years, I would say on average, um, 2020 was, was the least amount, but on average, at least, at least about 15 a year, at wow. least, at, at least 15 a year, no less than that. Wow. So, so, um, I would say, I don't know about, about 50, about 50 in the last four years Jeez. in 2019. I like to, I don't like to brag about a whole lot of things, but, but, but I do like to, I do like to brag about, about goofy stuff. Like in 2019, um, we invested a little over 50,000 just in, in mentorships um, because I believe in proximity. Like, that's why I think this is so cool. Like, I'm like, yo, like, why are they not charging for this? Like this right here, like what I just heard Frank giving out right now. Yo, I'm on like, while they were talking, I'm on my secretary of state right now looking at stuff like this is cool. This is so crazy. I, I love, I love being around other excited people and I, I spend money on it because every time I go to events, I level up, you know? So what about you coach? Man, before I tell you, cause actually before you, I was getting ready to throw it out there and I was going to start, but let me let Anthony come in right behind you real quick. And then I'm going to go back to that. And then we're going to get out Saron the way before she starts throwing shoes. <laughs> Anthony. Mm -mm, no, man, I ain't, I ain't got, I got nothing to say, man. If you're not following Aaron Bevins, then uh, please do so. If you know who he is, uh, he came into the hive mind and he's going to bring a lot of value. So if you're on this call and you're in his presence, if you're in close proximity <laughs> to this man, people like Coach Simmons, uh, you're on the right call, man. So, yeah. Um, also, I know Aaron got some uh, an album dropping soon. And he got an offer from an a entity that everybody's heard of. There's not one person on the planet that hasn't heard of this entity. He's doing amazing things in a lot of different directions. So I'm just happy to be on the car. You guys rock it. Cool, man. So, yeah, this could kind of start it off. This will, this is what I think I want to do. I just thought about it, right? Because it's, it's always the people who are, like, on the event. I mean, like, on this call. And then they come and they go. And so I want to do this. It just got put on my heart. Um, if you want to go to the event, right, write my number down, uh, 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 Chris or, or Frank, throw my number in the, um, or, or Sharana, throw my number, Bree, throw my number in the, um, chat. And if you want to go to this event and you worried about money or you worried about getting there, I'm going to sponsor three people to go. Fuck that. We ain't giving away nothing tonight. I'm going to, I'm going to pay for three people, I'm going to pay for your ticket, I'm going to pay for your, your, your hotel, and I'm going to pay for your flight. Three. Three people. My number's in the thing. First three people that hit me that really want to go and that ain't ready to, 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 that's not fucking around, my number's in there. I'm going to send three people from the hive this week 
there, all expenses on me. So to answer your question, you know, I've been at this for about five years. I go all the way back. I had Tony laughing. I went to Rafael Vargas. I remember when Carlos Reyes, I got it on video. I remember when Carlos Reyes uh, 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 and, and Sal was in front of the room uh, five or four years ago, looking like, you know, whether they were even making, you couldn't tell whether they were making money. You look like if you stayed too close to them, they was going to rob you. <laughs> right? I've been to We Live with Max Maxwell. Proximity is a monster. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that I pride myself uh, having had the pleasure of being on with you, but everybody from Real Estate Diddy to Byron to Brian to all of these people in my phone that I have made contact with, y'all know I'm not here to really be the real estate guru. That's not my deal. That's not why they brought me here. But don't get it twisted. We do deals, right? And I told y'all about that. We we have to post the things that we do eventually in this group so folks know that it's real and it's not a lot of fluff because you just heard Aaron Bevan say that we should be charging for this and we're not. And it's for a reason. It's a reason. Anthony and Daniel have such the biggest hearts and then my goofy ass and joined them and we just want to give and give and give and give and show and help individuals become wealthy in this space because it was not not white, not black, but real estate early on was a wealth building thing that we had no access to. We had no information and now it's prevalent and we would be fools not to take advantage and take it for granted because it's not going to always be here in the space that it is. So I hope I answered your question, right? Because I've been to I've been to Carlos Reyes know my Amex number. You know what I'm saying? I, I paid for the mentorships. I've been in different spaces. I got right. Alex says his phone number. It's not to brag or impress anybody. It's to impress the you. Money that is very important. I've been doing right quick. I've been doing events for 22 years. I'm an overnight success. It took me 22 years to be that. You know, with 400 employees and in five states, four and a half states. And I don't get here just by not going, right? And so, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm done after that, you know, if you're interested in going, you got my number. You know, the first three people that hit me, I don't even know my phone, but I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a work that out and we're gonna get you there. Cause I want, cause all you need is one thing. And he said it, there's one degree Celsius between hot water and boiling water. And all you need is one thing to hear, one thing. I, 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 I'm gonna tell you this and I'm gonna get out of the way. I went to Raphael Vargas's event and I was confused. I thought I was retarded. I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. They were talking about KPIs and KPI. What is that, a, 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 a cousin to the FBI? I don't know what you're doing, like what are you talking about? And he's breaking down the science of how a business works. And then I go to Max Maxwell's event and I get a chance to be behind stage. And, 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 I, I, and ladies and gentlemen, don't sit in the back of the room, get to the front of the room, right? Get, to the, get there early, get in the front of the room so you can get that spit on you. That's what you, well, I don't know about now because of the COVID and shit, but you know what I mean. You want to be close enough in proximity that you hearing this stuff. So anyway, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of here. Let's see, it's 756. Yeah. Sharon, I got three, four minutes. Uh, Anthony, would you like to say anything before we get kicked out? I'd like to share something. Um, please, please, sir. Um, another reason why I like the hire if Anthony didn't have nothing to say, dude, please, man. As well. please. Daniel's if you don't know who DeAndre is, follow DeAndre. <laughs> DeAndre put you on some shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I just wanted to share, guys. So, um, <clears throat> I made a post in the inner circle group about buying a property from a hive member. Um, the reason I like the hive is because. So this person that I met, um, she was she was already wholesaling a long time ago, right? But you know, she was doing it the Excel she way, kind of how we all start. And then I introduced her to the hive and brought her along. Um, and eventually, you know, she got VAs and she got, you know, her deals coming along with the hive. 
um, like leads, not deals, but leads. So um, not only what did I bring her to the hive and she's like, oh, thank you. It makes my life so much better because she's like, she's a mom of like three or four uh, and, a, you know, and a, and a wife because she has a husband, whatever. So her life is pretty busy. It's nuts. Right. Um, so she said the hive has made her life entirely better. Right. Because um, every, everything is in house. It's not podio and this and all these extra softwares. Um, but not only was I able to bring it to the hive to make her life easier, I was actually uh, able to be her first wholesale deal on the hive. So I brought it to the hive. She started looking for deals. And then she brought me a deal and then I bought it. So I brought it to the hive. And then I was her first deal with the hive. She's done other deals, but I, I was, I'm just glad to say I was her first hive of my deal. Um, she's not on the call, but it was just kind of like a special thing. Um, cause it's like keeping it, you know, in the hot, keeping it in the family, you know, which is pretty dope, pretty dope. Thank you for sharing that, bro. And I promise you it's God is my witness. Oh, everybody is, is, is Esteban, Esteban Yobbs. Where you go, Dane? <laughs> I'm right here. I'm right here. Esteban, All right. Here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me come back. I mean, so, so, so like, I promise you, right. Dan, you've been working all day. Walk that 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 dude gonna sleep good tonight. He, this weekend, you ain't gonna be able to get Daniel because he's gonna be asleep because he's working. Like we got, I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. We know we give out. I got we got camera crew out there. We taping, we're gonna re reintroduce the way the hive is supposed to be used. We're gonna reintroduce uh things and fill in the blanks, and then we're gonna work on this hive university. Right, he's he's taping for the next three days, man. We got a whole camera crew out there, and he's taping it official, and, and and it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be good. And so, to DeAndre's point, right, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you that we got some machines that we building, and I promise you, when this thing takes off, you're gonna be more than prideful. You prideful now, but you're gonna be more than prideful to offer. You're gonna look at somebody and say, "Hey, we over at the hive. You wanna join?" And they're gonna look at you like. Join and and your you, you, the, the fervency, the fire that you're gonna have in you when they look at you like what is the hive and you give it to them, they're gonna want to join because they're gonna feel all of us in your conversation. Woo! That gets me excited. All right, Stefan, uh Mr. Yobbs, please close us out before we get kicked out. So message message coach for your all-inclusive paid trip to Milwaukee. Please take him up on the offer. If his phone, he's probably checking his phone right now. He got 10 messages. So I'm, ex I'm excited for everybody going to Milwaukee. I hope uh, everybody I hope everybody has a good time that comes. We're going to have a good time. Um, everybody that comes, we're, getting, we're providing dinner for everybody that's there that's a Hive user. So definitely take us up on that. And, uh, yeah, we're working on a lot of good things. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a whole new man. Look at me. <laughs> This is this is this is for you. So a lot of what I'm doing is for all you guys, and uh, we're working on a lot of big stuff, man. Just working, working hard, and making stuff look better and do better, and making our taking our content to another level, producing more content. Uh, Rico says, "Who's that?" This is uh Steven. This is Esteban Jobs. This is Daniel Martinez. But um, this is uh, a, a lot. A lot's going into this, and I hope you all can say something. You all can see the work that we're putting out there. That is something y'all can resonate with and participate with because this is all for you guys. This is to make a better product to represent that you guys can sell it to other people and it'll be easier. So this is all for everything. So I, I was telling coach, I haven't shaved in like 10 years. This is the first time. So I'm sacrificing too. <laughs> I, I, do, I, I do have, I do have a, it's less of a, a statement. I have a question. I have a question because I'm, I'm new to the hive. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of not just not just the the leaders here, but but of the software. Um, oh, uh, I just want to boast on one thing. I want to boast on 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 uh, one thing. Uh, first week of using the hive mind. I shared this with Anthony. We locked up. We contracted and sold using uh, the hive mind a a fifty thousand dollar deal. And I said, man, if there was anything that made me a believer, it, it well, number one, actually, there, uh, this is perfect because Tony Romero is here right now. But um, 
Tony is the one who brought me into the hive. All right. And and when he brought me on, y'all want to know what really sold me? This man was so enthusiastic. I said, bro, I'm not available until like midnight tonight. And I was I was expecting him to be like, okay, we could do it another time. He was like, okay, cool. So at, it's like midnight and my man walks, I'm like fa- about to fall asleep and his enthusiasm, I don't even remember what he was telling me. I was like, I- I'll sign up, man, because he was just so excited and I'm so grateful I did because literally after spending about two weeks building it out, you know, our, our, you know, we were, we were able to contract our first deal. Since then, um, my acquisition guy is locking up at least a contract every, every couple of days just from the software. But with that said, I, I had a, so I just wanted to boast on, on you guys, you know, for, for helping us in that way. But I have a question because I, I'm new to the community. Um, how do I learn more about how to master the workflows and, and, and all of that. Like I'm, I'm actually here because I want to benefit from you guys and I want to learn this stuff. I want to, matter of fact, y'all think I'm playing. I have on, on my, on my, uh, I have a journal every week. I fill out this journal and on my journal, I, I put, I put, uh, I put what I'm, what I'm develop, what skill set, I'm, what three skill sets I'm developing that week, and literally I have one of the skills is to become a master at workflows on on, on Hive Mind, because okay. I don't know what the heck I'm doing, man. So, so does anybody have suggestions on what what could I do? What what could I do to start chipping away at this to to learn? Um, is there is there a call that, that I could I could be on, or or are there just a route that I could take? What what do y'all recommend for me? Hey, yeah, uh, you actually asked a good question. I literally just recorded a video on workflows that we're probably going to release in the next few days. So I'm making a bunch of content on workflows to help people like you. So. I'm actually working on this right now. I just recorded a video on workflows and I'm recording a bunch of videos on workflows right now. So how can we process. get another how can we get a notification for this video? Got him. Because you know, because you know that I've been hunting for workflow videos the whole fucking week. Uh, so how how can we get notified? Because I'm on it, I'll watch it right away. Facts. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm it, with Steve, man. I'm with it'll, Steve. It'll I'm be, to learn this it, thing, it gotta man. get, gotta get edited. But here's the catch. Let me, let me, let me do this. The reason, right, that that Daniel is the guy that like thought it all through, right? And so it's like we got different people that have their opinions, and we know Tony has the, you know, the golden child version of it, right, and, and of how it works. But what we want to do is make sure that everybody has a baseline. Right. So that baseline, you can expand off of Would That makes sense, Aaron. Right. And so it's a lot of different people that do a lot of different things. You know, Bascar has his thought processes. So we kind of taking it back to the essence from which it came and then expand it from there. So it should be edited. My, my folks normally take give it to Monday, Tuesday. He should be putting it out. Awesome. I have a real quick Beautiful. question, though, and I'll keep it quick because I know you guys are I know we have to end it soon. Right. It's so I get it. Like I, I've been building out, I've been building out my own workflows, right? I've been just, just going crazy. And what I, what I need is right. Because I, I watch the videos and I see when I create a campaign, how it's, it's like the campaign, I can build the workflow in there already. So when I build out a separate workflow in the, in the automation sector, you know, is that to where I, how, I don't know how to connect those two. That's my problem, right? I can build out like what I wanted to do already. I, I, I like, I'm already trying to figure that out, but it's connecting it into that campaign. So it's like, I feel like, and that's why I'm confused. It's like, when I start a campaign up, I, I can just do it by event and create the workflow there just in lines. But then my, my misunderstanding is when I create a full scale workflow, how do I connect that inside the campaign? That's my problem. So I'm not sure if that, that even makes sense or that question came across right. You, do you have your campaigns already built out? Yeah, so I, I, built a, I built a couple different campaigns and that's where I got, that's why I stopped. Okay. Because I, no, I noticed. Great. That's great. You're already ahead of the game. So now when you go to build your workflow, go over to the, the side for building automations for your workflow. And it's going to ask you, do you want to build this from scratch or do you want to build this from a campaign? 
then mm. you say, I'm going to build from a campaign, which you already have. It's going to port all of everything over there. Then from there, what I would do is to save that, get another screen, open another screen with a different user, and then start um, a workflow, just play with one of the ones that's already on the system and see the different features of things that it can, is capable of doing. Leave the one that you have on the other screen and then start building on to it what you want it to do because the sample is going to show you different things that it can do. So you can just start making a mock-up of it and then test it out. And then so like you can make copies of it too, you know, just try it. If that didn't work, try it again just in using the same campaign. Yeah, so like, just, like, just, so real, just real quick, let me interrupt real fast. Um, yeah. This is being recorded, so I think we might have to revisit this conversation. We are cutting into the women's call right now. It should have already started, so let's respect the ladies. No, time. no, no. Let you know the I mean? let the wisdom flow. It's all good. We're blessed. Oh, well, 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 I got a better idea. Can we do yeah. this? Can can we can we meet on Clubhouse at twelve o'clock, and that be the first <laughs> thing we talk about? How about that tonight? No, no, no. On <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. Oh, Saturday. 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 Like tonight. All right. All right one, one, more, one more thing like before tonight. we get out of here. We are looking for leaders to help us lead these calls. Because I promise you, right, it's 30, 40 people. Towards second quarter, we'll be up to 100 folks on the calls, especially when Hive Mind University starts. And it's going to be, we're not going to, when Hive Mind University starts, we're not going to do four calls a week. Of course, that doesn't even make sense because there's going to be different teachers and different trainers. And we sign in different people. I, we feel like, I feel like Diddy, like we, I mean, Diddy, like Puff Daddy, like we signing bad boy records. We signing folks. And, you know, Mr. Bevins, I need a con conversation with you if I could to kind of hook you up with what, what we got going on. But we know this, I, I, I'll, I'll spill the beans and I know Daniel and nobody say anything. Please, please, please. Can, can, can Scouts Honor, can y'all throw your hands up, please? Please, Scouts Honor. Daniel. I'm about to tell them about. I'm Uncle, here. I'm here. Uncle, we signed Uncle Charles, and they they gonna be on. So they gonna be one of the mentors in the hive to help us learn how to efficiently do, you know, option deals, right? So the whole plan of this thing, right, is for you to become sharp, for you to become sharper, and for iron to sharpen iron, and no competition, all completion. How that sound? Anybody get excited about that? And real quick before we get out of here, Tony Romero, oh, the champ oh. is here. The champ is here. What's up, guys? How's it going? Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Oh yeah. Yep. How's it going, guys? Folks you guys have excited. a lot of people in here, huh? Both I don't know what I don't know what's sexier, man. Tony Romero's calves or his voice, man. Have y'all seen this man's <laughs> calves in person? I got the I got this thing real quick, Tony. Before you go, I got this thing where every time I see Tony Romero in person, I go up to him and smack his calves uh, as hard as I can. Anyway, I just wanted to put you on the spot, man. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Coach, can I talk a little bit about our event while I'm here? Please, Conjurer. <laughs> I try to make it a little bit earlier, but I was driving and I had 1% and it died while you guys were talking. Um, <clears throat> it's awesome to see the community in here. Um, it's awesome to see how many of you guys are, are collectively, you know, talking about different topics and growing within your businesses. I'm, I assume there's guys in here and, you know, females as well that are either, you know, doing massive amount of deals as well as, you know, just getting started. So, um, it's always nice to see a community, um, but especially the hive mind community. If you guys ever have questions, I'm, I'm a little bit hard to reach sometimes, but honestly, we've studied the hell out of hive mind. I've probably done workflows, built out workflows for, I don't know, 60 plus hours and worked with their team and um, connected a bunch of different systems together. Um, we have an event coming up. <clears throat> we actually used hive mind for our advertising for our event. Um, we texted uh, 13,000 real estate agents about the event. Um, and we're still obviously playing with that and you know using tags and things like that. But the amount of different things that HiveMind lets you utilize, such as workflows for the automation piece, as well as just templates to be able to text back, the cheapness of it with it being um, so um, 
at, at a good at a good rate and as far as sending out those texts the the fact that you can tag unlimited amount of things and times you know when somebody comes into our facebook group as soon as we accept them they go right within a second they're in our in our crm and we have them tagged in our system and we have a workflow that kicks in immediately so we're going to play around a lot more with hive mind and funnels and move into that space soon but if you guys ever have questions i mean you guys are in the right spot obviously and i mean, I know most of you guys already know that we do have an event coming up uh february 4th and 5th i had the honor of having a conversation with coach uh daniel and anthony and they were on board from the get-go to come and sponsor our event so we are extremely happy to have them there and oh, i forget my cameras up there uh we're extremely happy to have them there and you know we want to see as many hive members as possible um there so um i'm not sure the way coach is structuring it but i just want to tell you guys a little bit about it hbhs speaking of them they are going to be on our stage they're one of our keynote speakers they're they're going to be breaking down subject to and seller finance and all the creative strategies that they use for any of you guys that know carlos reyes carlos reyes is going to come and bless the stage as well he's one of our uh, main keynote speakers um so he's going to be flying down here he's actually speaking either the day after or the day before in california with uh billionaire jesse itzler um and kenneth clothier who's like you know also has run multiple billion dollar companies and a lot of other big guys so um he's going to be full of energy that weekend um we have uh aaron bevins actually our, is our going to be our mc so we're very proud to have him there you guys already know he knows how to make sure that um questions get answered and that nobody gets left behind uh quentin flores is coming down here from ground zero um we have a real estate broker slash agent from new york that did 60 million in sales last year um we have tj tajani who's a short short-term rental slash airbnb arbitrage uh guru um we have jacob blank coming down here two million dollars in assignment fees last year 19 years old he made his first million at 17. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen him around. If not, check him out. We have Tang Nguyen, who's a killer, um, who I'm trying to get into Hivemind if he's not already in. Um, they do texting at a massive level. They do creative deals at a massive level. I mean, they do anywhere from like two to five deals a day. They're doing it. They're doing it heavy. They do flips very heavily, and they do creative uh, structuring deals very heavy. They're great at raising private money as well. Um, I'm sure I can keep going with the list, but I kind of already gives you an idea of, oh, Nicola Spinoza, short sale queen is coming. Um, Josh and Tiffany High, they did $3 million profit flipping last year. So we try to bring a heavy, heavy stage. And my partner um, for this event is Scott Leary. He's a huge developer, hard money lender. He's done over $100 million in loans. He owns 1.5 million square feet of industrial slash commercial. Um, property and he owns over 2000 units and does a lot more that I can talk about but that's just a gist of the event and we are very excited we've got people flying in from 18 states right now and we just wanted to lead with value no pitches whatsoever just straight value um so yeah I mean that's it you guys will see the hive there I did give the hive permission to um not necessarily permission because they don't really need it because they're they're family but um, they are going to, I know if Daniel and Anthony will be available and coach, if he decides to fly down, will be available to uh, possibly do a, a mastermind there um, off, you know, there on the grounds, but not during the event, something completely private for you guys. So just being able to meet them, network with them, both of them will be here as well as, you know, other Hive members. So uh, I think I've done enough talking, but that's, you know, if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them at me, but I know you guys are on a time limit as well. But well, we appreciate you, man. We're going to get out of here because I don't get cussed out because I made a promise that we were going to respect Sharonda and the ladies. And so thank you, Mr. Romero. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bevins. Thank you, everybody. Anthony, Daniel, you know, it's the hive, baby. Gentlemen, we're out of here. Ladies, take it away. Y'all have a great night. Everybody be safe, be careful, and we love you. Talk to you soon.